Hello everyone, it's me Varus, and in this video I'm going to give you a full update on the U.S.'s weather, tropics are getting active as we have a hurricane threat for the Gulf Coast, and much, much more in this video. So I hope you enjoy, and yeah, let's get right into it. So yeah, I haven't been able to post in a while, I mean school's been really busy, but these weekends I'll definitely be able to post, so today I'm going to come out with another video after this one most likely, um, but yeah. I'll try to post during the weekdays, but guaranteed videos on the weekend. So, starting out with surface analysis. Um, as of 18Z, Sunday, September 22nd, almost into October, first day of astronomical fall. So, happy fall to all. Um, we actually have quite a bit going on right now. Now, we have this pretty big cold front. So, we have two little cold fronts. So, let's get into the first one over here. So, we have one designated cold front right here and this has prompted frost uh, advisories for many including minnesota the dakotas and wisconsin and then just south of there we have another hole uh we have another cold front in between these two lows and another trailing one below that these aren't as strong i mean this one is pretty strong and causing some wet severe weather along it but nothing too crazy and same over here um, that this one's a little more weaker, this one's a little more stronger, but especially this one up north, this is going to really cause some colder temperatures and first frosts for many in the north central U.S. So, severe weather, um, is possible with these fronts, but it's very spotty, it's not enough, it's not that favorable, so maybe like, overall actually just like your summer variety thunderstorms, so, uh, but yeah, cold fronts and lows trailing along this thing, and then, uh, a warm front just above, uh, causing some warmer, humid air in front of that colder, drier air. So, that is that, causing some unsettled weather, but besides that, relatively beautiful United States. Now, getting into our alerts, relatively quiet. Now, you do have coastal flood advisories over here, um, over here in the eastern eastern kind of coast but it's kind of populated since we have a like uh philadelphia baltimore um air i don't think nyc is in it or dc but it's a right along the mid-atlantic seaboard we have a couple of coastal flood advisories and there are our frost what frost advisories up in northern wisconsin and minnesota and then overall besides that nothing much to worry about Severe weather, starting out with that marginal risk, again, right along that cold front, kind of trailing like here. So we have our marginal threat with that stronger one. Tornado, nothing, no real threat. Wind and hail are both threats to watch out for, so keep that in mind. Starting our work week, wind and hail are not both threats again, but no tornado threat, so another relatively light threat risk. And then day three, nothing much, just your general springtime or fall, summer thunderstorms. Now getting into the tropics, and this is the big talk that's been going around in social media and lots of meteorologists and news websites are talking about it. That's because of, so let's start out with the Atlantic, and actually no, let's start out with the Eastern Pacific. We have Tropical Depression 10E that has just formed, and this is something we got to watch, okay? It is heading, it's actually stationary right now, but it's eventually going to turn and speed up heading northeast. This is going to strengthen into a storm and, have, and it's going to prompt some warnings and watches along Mexico, okay? And even areas of Guatemala could feel some impacts, not as bad as uh, Mexico, but going to turn around, going to strengthen into a pretty solid tropical storm, I think it's peaking around 50, 60 miles per hour. Either way, a solid storm, tropical storm, slamming it to the coast and quickly weakening off into a depression. But let's see, it could even get into the Bay of Campeche and Gulf and re-intensify into some Atlantic named storm. But besides that, this is 10E. Gotta watch out um, to see what it does and any impacts it does bring. Now, we already kind of have some details, but nothing much. Um, here it is in Spanish. Uh, you can pause the video right now. Alright, and then you have your key messages in English. Heavy rainfalls, significant flash flooding, tropical storm watches have been issued, and a hurricane watch could be required if it does become a hurricane 
and get past a 70 mile per hour tropical storm. So there's tropical depression 10E. Now we'll go all the way back and take a look at the rest of the Eastern Pacific. Another storm, disturbance 2, 10% in the next 40 hours, 40% in the next 7 days. Also trekking almost due east. And this is a kind of interesting pattern. You usually see these storms develop and head out, right? You usually see these. That's what we have seen. Now we have a different upper air pattern pushing the storms back east. And so 10E is going to eventually start heading back northeast. Um, this storm is going to start heading east. So overall, if you are right in this area, look, watch out for some possible uh, tropical impacts in the coming days and even weeks. So we'll have to watch out right over there. Now, the more talk has been in the Atlantic, especially with this one little system. Now, this is, as of 2 p.m., 40% in the next 48 hours, 80% in the next 7 days. This is Invest 97L, and it is currently right, it's Disturbance 2, okay, Disturbance 1 is right over here, but first, let's actually talk about Disturbance 1, 0%, this thing's gonna fizzle out, okay. Disturbance 3 behind it, 0 in the next 48 hours, 50% in the next 7 days, generally heading west-northwest. So we're going to watch this system as well. But we really have to pay attention to Disturbance 2 as that's the main story. Now, right now, uh, there is our little area that's marked as an invest. It is going to head into favorable waters. It's going to be favorable conditions, very favorable. And eventually, lots of models show rapid strengthening. Now, this is getting a little farther, but expect strengthening nonetheless as it gets into the eastern gulf and eventually looks to take aim along the Florida Panhandle, or between the Florida Panhandle and the Louisiana coastline. So we're going to have to watch out for that. Now, how does it look on IR? Here we have it. Very, very healthy, honestly, okay? Now, at the same time, it's not that healthy, okay? When I mean healthy, you have lots of thunderstorm activity, very nice cloud tops firing off, especially on this southeastern side. You have cloud tops over on the whole eastern side, some on the western side, but overall it does look pretty sheared and very disorganized. So there is convection, there is so strong thunderstorms, but we need to see the organization and wrapping around of it before we can classify it as a depression or tropical storm. Um, it does have some outflow, it is over water, so we're going to watch it as it continues to trek um, generally northward for now and eventually northeastward. Now, taking it into the GFS model. We're going to go GFS, and then we're going to go Euro. GFS has it very aggressive. Now, these models, it's not going to exactly happen what these models say. But starting out with the GFS, we take it right there. You start seeing it starting to pop up. And, I mean, it starts rapidly strengthening. I mean, you go from 8 a.m. September 25th to 2 p.m. So, you go from 973 millibars to 950, 953 20 millibars drop in six hours. That is like beyond rapid intensification. That is very, very rapid. And so, um, and then continues 946, 940, 936, and 934. I mean, it just continues plummeting. Okay, and it's kind of big too. Now, this is again, you shouldn't take the what this what I'm trying to what I'm showing the GFS for is to show where it could go, okay, show what we could see. But that doesn't mean you pay attention to the strength totally, saying, oh, we're having 934 millibar low into the Florida Peninsula. No. I'm saying keep an eye out. Okay, we do have a chance at that, at a major hurricane at least. But what I'm saying is we do have a chance of a hurricane impacting these areas in a bit, okay, in the coming days. So it's something to watch out for, but don't take the strength as, oh, we're having a Category 5 slamming. Florida Panhandle, but it is interesting to see that GFS is showing this, and then deepens all the way down to 933, making landfalls, probably Cat 5 hurricane, and then weakening down, um, still maintaining hurricane status, uh, getting into Georgia. So that's the GFS Euro. Let's go over the Euro. Um, let's go all the way back. Euro has it coming. I like Euro. Okay, Euro much more reasonable, not going full bonkers. 981 strong Cat 1, Cat 2 hurricane into the Florida panhandle. And then it 
uh, weakens that. Now, something interesting that I have seen people talk about is we're going to have this upper level feature right here. And I'll actually, sh I'll actually show you guys that on our... Um, we I'll show you guys right here. So, right here is our upper feature. And then we have our other system right here. And this actually is yoinking the system into the coastline. And then as it gets on land, it actually kind of does a Fujiwara effect where two cyclones, when they're in close proximity, they kind of circle around each other, as you can kind of see. So that's interesting as well. Um, getting into intensity charts, we have most showing at least a Cat 1 and lots showing a Cat 2, some showing a Category 3. Um, so just expect a hurricane possibly, as that's what most show getting into it. We'll get more data as we get closer to the development of the system. Tracks. Are relatively similar, okay, but there's actually kind of a big spread on actually. I should have said that. You have all the way into the Florida coast and you have all the way into the Tampa area, okay? So that's a very, very big widespread area. Um, so it's something, but one thing's for sure Gulf Coast, watch out. Uh, strength wise, a solid hurricane, major hurricane is possible, okay? So we'll have to watch out. But the consensus shows a Florida panhandle. Um, landfall at around a borderline major hurricane. All right, now talking about the na the U.S.'s weather, we're starting out six to ten six to ten day temperature outlook, much above average temperatures for most of the U.S., below average for the areas of Washington and the Pacific Northwest, and then precipitation above average for the Southeast, below average in most of the other areas. So I hope you enjoy. Try to keep it quick. Try to get you guys the latest information. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a great rest of your day. Goodbye.